Badgers, it's Serena and welcome back to my channel for another video. I'm so sorry I've been gone for so long and um, for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram and may not have seen my post there, I am working on bringing content to you guys that is, while I don't want to say it's more complicated, it, it kind of is because I'm trying to include multiple people in my videos. Um, some follow me around videos, a lot of them will just take place beyond this sofa, which is where I have filmed pretty much all of my videos, um, and there are some logistics um, to that that I, I do need to sort out, because this is kind of a one girl project. I don't really have a lot of people I can ask to, hey, can you film me and film them? So. There are some videos I want to do where a tripod just won't cut it, so a lot of it is just working all of that out, but I will try to bring you some sit-down videos um, as soon as possible. But to all the moms out there, I wanted to say Happy Mother's Day! And this video is really not about being blind so much as it is about being a mother. And in honor of Mother's Day, I wanted to film this video and talk about 10 reasons why I myself love being a mom. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. Humbleness. If you have had any trouble with being a bit humble before you became a parent, after you become a parent, there's really no issue there. <laughs> Whether you give birth to your child or you adopt your child, knowing that you are in charge of a brand new life. Even if you adopt a child at 5 or 10, they are still impressionable. They still need guidance. And to know that you are in charge of guiding that life, of shaping them, knowing that what you say to them and what you do to them will have a lasting impact, for me, that's extremely humbling. Um, it's it's frightening to, to an extent as well because you know that everything you say to them and everything you do affects them in some way. And for me, knowing that, you know, okay, I should keep my temper even if my daughter is just going crazy one day and she's really just not listening. I just have to take a deep breath and I'm just like, okay, what can I say to her that won't leave any lasting marks on her? Or what can I say to her that will get through to her, but that will also boost her confidence so that she can look back on this moment and remember what I said to her with fondness? So it's extremely humbling and it's extremely terrifying. So I suppose that really just depends on how you look at it. Holidays become magical again. I don't want to sit here and say that if you don't have children, your holidays are boring or they're uneventful or they're not meaningful because that is not true. But when you do have a child, I personally believe that holidays, they start to bring back a lot of that magic that you lose when you grow up. And um, for me, it's fascinating to be on the other side of that magic on Christmas, on Halloween, on Easter, knowing that you can help perpetuate that magic and knowing that you're bringing that magic to your child and seeing their enjoyment and seeing their belief in these magical things that, you know, you stop believing in at a certain age. It's magical in its own right. And while you're not going back to believing in Santa Claus or believing in the Easter Bunny or believing that there's a ghoul lingering around every corner when you're out trick-or-treating, you're also part of that belief for them. So it brings a lot of that magic back. I have so much fun shopping for my daughter for Easter or for Christmas. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I think I have more fun shopping for her than she does opening the presents. I have a lot of fun helping her pick out costumes uh, for Halloween or decorating eggs for Easter. It's so much fun and you get to enjoy some of that fun the way you might have as a child. It's just, it brings it all back. 
these years are years you can't ever get back. Once they get older and they stop believing the way they used to, looking back on these years, I know that they are going to be even more important to me then than they are now. And trust me, they are super important to me now. You can play with dollhouses again and you can blame it all on me. <laughs> I know that sounds really bad, but it's so true. I mean, you know, I don't think I'm one of those people who's ever lost her inner child, but you can't indulge your inner child in the way you used to when you were a child without people giving you very funny looks. So when my daughter's begging for me to play hopscotch with her or to draw on um, the cement with, uh, what is it, um, sidewalk chalk, <laughs> um, or when she wants me to play dolls with her. Or if she wants me to build a blanket fort with her and get into said blanket fort, which is, yeah, good luck fitting in that, mom. But, <laughs> you know, you're just not thinking about what everyone else is thinking. And even when there are people there to be like, what are you up to? You just point at the kid and say, hey, she wants me to play with her. And you can play and you've got a pass to kind of just indulge that inner child. You get a pass to climb those trees. You get a pass to go down that slide that you haven't gone down in 18 years. You get a pass to, you know, run around like a goofball with your kid because nobody's looking at you like, uh, maybe you should, should just calm down. No, they're looking at you like, that's awesome. A mom who's playing with her kid. It's super cool. And not only is it fun because you get to have those memories with your child, it's fun because you get to be that child again for, you know, just for those moments. And that can mean a lot to people like me who have that inner child and really just don't get to indulge in them often. Unconditional love. Now, this is, I think, a bit of a controversial one because I don't think you should ever have a child because you're looking for somebody to love you because you are the one who has to be there for your kid. You, sh you are there to love them. You are there to teach them. You are there to hold their hand and guide them through life because they need you more than you need them. And I guess a lot of people might not believe those words or agree with them. But by the same token, when your kid hits a certain age, my daughter is six, going on 20, but still, you know, <laughs> she's six. And I know that if I'm having a bad day, she'll notice. And while I try to hide that from her, you know, hide those bad days, because it's not her job to make me feel better, sometimes she'll still catch me looking sad or looking deep in thought about something and she'll come up and she'll just hug me and say mommy i love you so much and that matters that unconditional love is incredible to know that you can just not be perfect and you're still perfect in your child's eyes maybe due to that imperfection or maybe just because they love you so much they're in an age that they don't see those imperfections yet and even when they do, it won't matter because, hey, even when your teenager's yelling at you that she hates you, you know that if the craziest stuff happened to her, who is the person she's going to come crying to first? Mom. So yes, unconditional love is definitely something you can get from your child, but it is definitely not a reason to have a child. If you think you want to have a kid because you need someone to love you, you need to think again and just not go down that path because that's not how to get that kind of love. You need to love yourself before anyone's going to love you, and that includes a child. But I will tell you that it does help when you're having those hard days when you can't see the good in yourself. To have a little person just come up and hug you and be like, you're awesome because you know what it makes you think you know what i created this incredible child i am awesome <laughs> vacations begin to hold an entirely new meaning this is very similar to holidays 
but going to a place like Disney World or Hershey Park or Busch Gardens or on a cruise or to the beach, vacations. If you're taking a vacation with your child, it's just that much more fun. I don't think every parent will agree with this because I know that there are some parents and there are some kids where, you know, if you have your kids with you on vacation, it's it can be pretty stressful, but I also think that, again, having a child is a balancing act, and if you look at everything that's stressful about them, you're going to find it, because kids can be pretty stressful. Um, and I only have one, so I'm not going to say that taking five kids to Hershey Park is a walk in the park, because it's probably not. It's probably really difficult, and it could probably be a little overwhelming at times. But by the same token, when those children are grown up and gone, you're gonna look back on those vacations as amazing experiences. I love taking Rosie out. Even so, like honestly, I even love taking her out to just Panera Bread. It's not a vacation, but it's a memory to make with her. And I just love being out with her and I think going on vacations with her brings an entirely new meaning to those vacations. You see the world through her eyes and when she's learning something or... Oh, sorry about that. that I think that's a humidifier um, in the corner over there. Uh, so I'm sorry about that if that's super loud. But um, seeing Hershey Park or Disney World through her eyes or seeing a cruise through her eyes or seeing even just a simple beach through her eyes it's just it's in it's incredible and i think it matters so much and honestly it's i'm having a lot of trouble finding words to actually express what i'm thinking because for me um i i don't know i find that there's a magic and seeing through my daughter's eyes because as a grown-up I find that there's a lot that I've, I've just grown jaded to um, a lot of things I just don't notice anymore both you know visually and just <laughs> little things that pass me by but Rosie notices everything like walking down the sidewalk and seeing a patch of beautiful flowers and she stops and she's so enthralled by them and she wants to pick them all for me or she wants me to take pictures of her with the flowers and it's just not something I would have noticed anymore. So I think taking your child out on vacation especially just brings a lot of that worldly magic back to your life. Back to mine anyway. You get to revisit the stories you knew as a child. Good night moon, anyone? <laughs> um, what is it? Good night moon, Peter Rabbit, Oh gosh, what is another song, a story that I used to read as a child? Um, the Little Miss books, I think, like Little Miss Plump and Little Miss Clumsy, I think, or I, I don't know, it's been a long time. But all the little books that you used to read as a kid, if you have a child, you can revisit a lot of them. Some of them are gender specific, so maybe not every single book. But it's incredible to read Corduroy again and be like, Oh my gosh, Lisa, I remember you! <laughs> okay, because some books, they just never grow old. My daughter, she loves Corduroy, um, she likes Peter Rabbit, and she likes Goodnight Moon. I have all of them in print braille. And to read them and to remember them is, is incredible. When you're a mom, Disney is your friend. I... I have always loved Disney movies. Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, the newer Disney movies that have come out, uh, Frozen and Moana, all those movies that I've just mentioned, my daughter loves them. Granted, if you have, I'm sorry, like the side of my nose just really itches today. <laughs> I must look a little silly just sitting here scratching my nose, like, hmm. <laughs> but no, that's just, I don't know, I have this annoying, annoying itch there. But anyway, as I was saying, I love all those Disney movies. And yes, some of them are, again, gender specific. I'm not sure if many boys have really done the Frozen thing or if many little boys are into Moana. They might think Maui is awesome because Maui is pretty awesome. 
for me, I can only speak to having a daughter, so I'm sorry if I'm giving shout outs like this to all the parents and parents of sons are like, yeah, that's not a thing for us. But for me, I get to revisit Disney and it's awesome because I get to share movies that I loved as a child and still love because like I said, inner child, <laughs> I've never outgrown Disney. I don't, I don't, I'm not even ashamed to admit that. I think it's fun. Okay. I will sit there and watch Moana on my own if I just need a little pick me up because honestly, there's, there's nothing like Disney if you get a good movie anyway. But revisiting those movies like classics like Beauty and the Beast and Cinderella and The Little Mermaid, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, all of that. To get to revisit that with my daughter and to see her magical side just light up because she's in love with the princesses and the pretty dresses and the stories that they're telling. It's incredible. It's an incredible feeling and I just love it. I really, really, really just love that part of being a mom. You really get to appreciate privacy. Any parent can tell you that unless you're very strict, even the bathroom stops being sacred <laughs> because your kids will just barge in there like, hey, so I had a question for you and you're just sitting there trying to get some privacy and your kids are just like, yeah, um, you're in the bathroom and? It's true, but as a parent, you really get to appreciate privacy and I know that, I guess that's not really specifically mom related, but it's, it's another reason why I love being a mom. Before I was a mother, spending time alone, it kind of made me sad sometimes. And now when I get those moments alone, I really, I really appreciate them. And I really enjoy just being able to go into the bathroom and close the door and it stays closed and read a book or watch a more adult show like Criminal Minds or Game of Thrones. To just have that time to myself to breathe to kind of regain a little bit of me before you know i give it back to her enjoy that time with your child but also enjoy the time away from your child it does not mean that you don't love your child i find that i can be my best mommy self when i've had a little bit of me time and that's important when you have a child going out for something like frozen yogurt or ice cream or pizza, it turns from guilt fest into fun fest. Now, not every mother struggles with weight or food like I do, <laughs> um, but I know enough moms are like, oh, I really shouldn't eat this ice cream or I shouldn't eat this frozen yogurt or really should not eat this pizza. But when you're with a kid, at least, with a child like mine, Rosie loves to go out to eat. She loves to go out for ice cream, for frozen yogurt, and for pizza. And while it's definitely not something that is an everyday thing because who could ever afford that, it becomes special when I get to take her out. And instead of thinking about what I should not be eating, I'm focused more on having a good time with her and building those memories with her. And I'm not focused on, I shouldn't be eating this. I'm focused on, are you having a good time? And are you going to go to sleep with a smile? Because that's all I want for her. And I love spending time with her. Quality time, special time. And it makes her so happy just to go out for something as simple as a bagel. I mean, honestly, we lose so much of that innocence when we get older. Going out for a bagel, it stops being fun. It's just... Well, it's just breakfast. It's just a typical thing. It's just something we do. Through a child's eyes, it becomes fun again and it becomes special and I love that. The little things matter the most. My daughter made me a flower for Mother's Day. A paper flower out of like thick cardstock and a pipe cleaner and she wrote inside it, she glued some paper hearts inside it, and she wrote, I love you, mom. Guys, that, I can't think of a more incredible Mother's Day gift that I could have gotten. Something made by my daughter's hands because she loves me. Not because somebody told her to, but because she wanted to make me a present, and she loves to do art, and she was just 
so pleased to give it to me. And she was so proud of herself and so proud of the work that she'd done and the effort that she'd put into it. And she's like that with everything she makes me. Sometimes I'll get through making dinner and she'll have been coloring over at the table and she'll run up to me and give me a card that just says, I love you, mommy, and she's decorated it. And, and she's so proud of it and it's just those little things, the little gifts, the little cards that she makes me for holidays or just because or the pictures that she colors me or that she draws me or the flowers that she picks me or the hugs that she gives me out of nowhere or just the random little things she comes out with like, mommy you're beautiful or mommy i love you it's the little things like that that make my life so fulfilling i'm not gonna wax lengthy on it because i will be sitting here talking to you guys about it for three hours straight because it's fascinating to me, but the little things in life make me so proud to be a mom, and it's so meaningful. And if you're a mom, I hope you see everything that I've mentioned here today as a blessing, because it really is. Even the tantrums they throw, you know, like the country song says, you're gonna miss this, you're gonna want this back. I'm sure that even in the height of Rosie's most horrific tantrum, when I'm ready to pull my hair out and, you know, ship her off to somebody I love for a week because <laughs> I need to recover. I know that when she's 18 years old or when she's 25 and she's on her own, living her life, her beautiful life, I'm gonna think back to those days and be like, give anything for another tantrum. It's not really something you think mid-tantrum, but even those little things matter. If you're a mom, happy Mother's Day. You've been given a blessing. Enjoy that blessing. Even when that blessing is driving you crazy, they are still worth everything. I wouldn't trade being a mom for anything in the world. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, um, subscribe. Uh, I'll put the links to my social media below. Please follow me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. If you had to choose one, I would definitely choose Instagram because I do try to post some extra content there. I have not had a chance to get any IGTV videos out uh, lately, which is something I really need to do. But I do a lot of cross posting so anything I post to Instagram is probably gonna end up on Facebook or Twitter anyway but it usually originates from Instagram so I have a lot of fun with Instagram so I would say follow me there thank you so much for watching I love you guys bye